Welcome to Tuttle Talk on 1190 AM. Now, live in studio, your host, local real estate expert, Andy Tuttle. Good morning and welcome to Tuttle Talk on the Real Estate Radio Network, where we teach you what the rich and the banks do, not what they tell you to do. And where we dispel the myth conceptions of financial wellness and the local real estate market and show you how focusing on a few key principles really can free you up to focus on the other important areas of your life, like your friends, your family, and the community. It's the most important hour of radio every Saturday right here on Clear Channel 1190 AM KFXR in the great state of Texas. I am your host, Andy Tuttle. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm very excited today. She's back. By popular demand, I will say, one of my best interviews, one of the best rated shows, Elizabeth Lyons is here with us today. Where's the crowd roar? That's what I want. <sighs> Thank you, Gabe. That was very good. Appreciate that. That's what I'm here for, buddy. Gabe Abshire here every every week with you now. It's Elizabeth, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Andy. I love being here on Total Talk. This is just <laughs> great fun for me. Thanks for having me. You bet. My pleasure. So, how have you been? Things are great. Things are going really well. The book's doing well. Uh, CBS Money Watch did a big piece on me in the book a couple months ago, so that was a big deal. That's cool. Uh, I started writing for CEO Texas. I'm very proud of that work. I'm very proud to Great be, article. Yeah, I'm just very glad to be affiliated with them and, and help CEOs run their companies. I really am. Yeah, and I'm excited to get into some of that because, and, uh, and excited for you to grill Gabe here in a minute <laughs> because he owns his own company. How, Gabe, how many employees do you have? Uh, we have nine employees, but we have some contractors. So we have nine employees and, you know, 14 or so contractors. But. Okay. Gotcha. Good to know. So this is going to be, a, you get ready, ask, get ready to ask him some good sure. questions here in a bit. So this is going to be fun. But before we get into that, I did, when I was reading some of the stuff, I hear you do yoga. We're talking about being fit. Yes. So uh, I'm a huge yoga advocate. Yeah. Never I, done it. There was a time not long ago, I did about 25 or 30 hours a month. I did five to six hours a week. I was as flexible as a pretzel. Wow. And uh, it does calm you down, absolutely. And uh, over time, it will actually change the brain waves and make things more static. So there, there's actually changes that goes on. There's scientific research around that. Huh. So you get really calm. You get really flexible. Even if none of that is of interest to you, if you sit at a desk all day long, it's fantastic to do that after you sit you at a desk it. because your back hurts, your your psoas muscle hurts, things hurt, and it's just fantastic. And boys take yoga too. Okay, I'll stop. Okay, that's good to know. <laughs> I'm actually trying to do some yoga right now. I always thought you could touch the, you know, the, one of the tests, flex tests, if you could touch your, you know, put your hands behind your back and yeah. touch them. Yeah, I how's can't. that working? Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. oh, touch your hands behind your back? Just touch both of your hands. <laughs> oh, I thought you were, you were demonstrating here if you want to. Let me know I what's going on in here. No. One hand is in the small of his back, and the other one's at the bottom of his neck. I mean, so I thought he was just, just trying to do that. Touch his hands together. Tuttle is contorted That's right, right now. We've not got flexible. the Tuttle Nowhere contortion. Close. That, that hurt. Okay. I'm with you, though, buddy. I'm the most unflexible person there is. Yeah, it's absolutely it's tough. It is ridiculous. It does feel good. It makes you really calm. It's a, it, it was a life changer for me. It was definitely a game changer. Definitely. No question about it. In fact, the last chapter of the book was rewritten. Actually, and uh, during that time where I was doing so much yoga, I had this thought. I was like, uh-oh, that last chapter's wrong. Followed by, whatever you do, don't go back and reread that last chapter. Just sit down and write it. And I did. And it's a very powerful chapter. It's the last chapter in the book entitled Unity. Yeah, so you rewrote that with the – actually, I think we mm -hmm. talked about that yeah. last time. Yep. Now, were you doing yoga? Did you get into that? Because And just to catch everybody up, remember last time we, we talked and you shared some very good personal stuff that yeah. was going on in your life. And as you had recovering from a specific type, was it skin cancer? It was skin cancer, yes. Well, is that What's the name of the skin cancer? I had called? basal cell. They told me I hit the lottery. And I thought, why would you say – you? hit the lottery and you have cancer in the same sentence. You can't do both of those. <laughs> I, didn't, sense. I didn't feel that way, no, but apparently yeah. I did. So yeah, we took a pretty serious operation to my face actually. And then I took 15 more to correct it and get everything right again. So it's been quite a quite a passage with that. Now that was, since we, now since we've talked last time, you have been very proactive and you saw a little something and you were like, when you did something about that. Yes, I did. So I was concerned that there were some precancer cells on the face. I saw a couple of spots. And so I went in and um, they did they did the whole face. They didn't just take the spots. They actually did an ablative surgery that was very serious. And uh, there's two more scheduled. I do do one more 
the next two months. So. so what does that mean, if you don't mind? What does that mean? What, do they? Is it like a laser on Yeah, it? it's a laser, but it literally burns uh, about two layers into the epidermis. And you literally see smoke while you're laying there. Oh. And you're watching yourself go on fire, literally. Mm-hmm. And the best part is they give you no painkillers before, what? during, or after. What? You get no painkillers. You get Why? nothing. I don't know. It's just how it goes. It's done in dermatologist offices all across the country all day long, every day. And they don't. It's just their standard practice. It's a it's a pixel surgery. It is considered surgery. It's an ablative, which means it rips everything up, and then you reheal the collagen. Well, that's a negative ghost. Right? No. Yeah, uh, yeah. There, I'm sure there's some type of outpatient <laughs> anesthesiologist saying, "Come in, or at least me, at least let me come in with a fifth of Jack or something." Yeah, I need some leather belts. I mean, something. I mean, come on. <laughs> no, the the issue is then they're afraid you're going to bleed out everywhere, so they don't okay, they don't fair. let you do Jeez, that. Touche, yeah. doctors. Yeah. Yeah, that's, do yoga afterwards. That'll calm you right down. That's Take right. the zip right out of you. <laughs> God bless. Well, you look fantastic. Wow. Thank you. You look actually v- very young. You've got fresh, young, beautiful skin. Thank you. Because beautiful. they keep sanding it off. But thanks, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm okay or with that. It off they keep smoke. burning it, it up. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 We'll start selling that in stores. We need to sell that retail. I'm sure there would be people all over Dallas that would love that. Oh, wow, I look younger too. And oh, fresh skin, they would probably no, do that. No, no, oh, no, no, yeah, no, yeah, no. Yeah, it's intense. It's intense. But yeah, anything that could have been pre Cancer is gone, and we just we do two more treatments. So that I think total, I would have had like eighteen, I think, operations for the skin cancer on the face. It's been Gosh. intense. That's very intense. So Elizabeth, yeah. you've got a great attitude. Speaking of attitude and skill, fantastic attitude about <laughs> that. Going through a very tough thank thing. You. So thank you for sharing. Yeah, I know you're welcome. I I believe there are uh, well, this is the this is a fact. There's twenty one thousand six hundred breaths in any day in the given body. So every day I wake up, I go, all right, it's four thirty a.m. Eyes have hit the ceiling. I'm awake. I'm taking an inventory. I got another twenty one thousand six. Hmm. Let's do something that's that's worth it. Let's try to do something. Hmm. That's very good. I, I'm, that's really good. I'm glad you said that. You're listening to Tuttle Talk here on the Real Estate Radio Network. My special guest today, Elizabeth Lyons, author of her most recent book, "I Quit Working for You Isn't Working for Me," and also a recent writer of an article in CEO Texas that I want to get into now, Elizabeth. Yeah. So. There were some stats that I'm just going to rip right out of all the good work that you did, all the heavy lifting. Absolutely. And then I'm going to ask a couple questions because I think this is so interesting. So, you know, you wrote the article basically about where we're at post uh, the recession of 2009, where the American worker is at. Yes. And some of these statistics are fascinating. So in May 2011, Forbes conducted a survey finding that the boomers, the age 48 to 65, were the unhappiest workers and then Gen X. And then uh, you have another one in Career Builder that conducted a survey in 2011 that determined that 77% of workers are burned out on their jobs. 43% of responders stated that their stress levels on the job had increased substantially in the previous six months. And then you posted another one in January 2011 when CNN surveyed 1,400 U.S. workers and found that 84% were fed up and looking. So why... Yeah. Is America so unhappy at work? Well, we're in post-recession. One thing I want to go back to in those statistics, yeah. I, I specifically want to point out those dates because we are in 2013 and we're post-recession. You're talking about a Forbes article in 2011. You are in the throes of recession and you're getting data that says people are fed up, tired, and, and looking or about to leave. And I think that's very compelling. So now, it's two years later, the market has turned a little bit. And they're starting to, you know, go out there and see what else is available. People are tired. They survived recession. You know, I call them the survivors of recession. They have, uh, you know, seen, you know, Joe, Bill, and Bob laid off. They watched them pack their cardboard boxes of their cubes and walk out the front door, and they were laid off. And they absorbed their positions. Their workload went up. And so now they're tired. It's been a couple years later. It's post-recession. They're tired. They're overworked. Many have actually expanded their skill set, and they could actually make ten or fifteen thousand dollars more. And now all of a sudden, they're not as fearful. And I think that's what's really happening is they're not as fearful. So they're like, "Hey, what else is out there?" I mean, the calls that I get um, when I'm coaching are are like, you know, I've been in my job a period of years, and I might want to see what else is out there. How is the market? But I'm not sure how to do it. You know, those sorts of calls. And so. The, the calls from the, on the client side, when I work on client side and people, you know, employees, if you will, those are calls that I get that they are working. So I'm not getting calls from people that are in transition groups or unemployed. It's not like recession. I'm getting calls that people that are working that are saying there's got to be something else out there. So 
you got so I think I see what you're saying there too. So in 2011, people were frustrated. They've been frustrated for two years, but the job market right. wasn't such where they felt confident yep. enough. Now they are feeling confident enough, and that points me to another statistic that you put actually about executives, which is compelling. Yes. 1,627 executives were surveyed by exec, execunet.com, and they found that more than 90% surveyed would take a recruiter's call, and more than 50% were confidentially looking. Absolutely. So that one of the reasons I was so wow. excited to uh, write for CEO Texas is because I'm trying to sound an alarm bell that says CEOs, you know, VPs, are, are you paying attention to your staff? Yeah. Because if you're not, let me tell you, your competitor might be. So it's kind of important to figure out where your staff's, where their head's at. Or are they in the game? You know, it's, it's just, it's that time. It's not time to think that, you know, it's recession and nobody's making any moves and everybody's scared because that time has passed. And business owners, small, large, or, you know, what have you, they need to start thinking about retention plans. Do they have them? Do they even know who their top performers are? You know, these are these are very common questions they might want to start to consider now because when that market changes, they're going to post an ad and they're going to get three candidates apply. They're going to have to do real head hunting, which is cold calling into a competitor and seeing if you can wiggle that talent out to get it. That's uh, so what you're saying there is it's not just about to the employee, but really focusing on the employer and what they need to do about it right now because they're not in a situation where, yeah, their employees may be unhappy, but you know, you're not going to go anywhere because you don't know about the job market. Now they're getting more confident, so employers need to take action. What can those employers do? I think I think just start with awareness. You know, I would just start with trying to figure out are are your employees engaged? That would be the first question. And then I I mean when I ran teams, I looked at individuals and I wanted to know if they were invested at all in the team and the company and in me as the leader. I mean, those are the questions to start to ask. Uh, people usually don't quit jobs because of the work. They quit jobs because of the leadership. Sometimes they quit jobs because of the company and they're concerned about where the company's going. But for the most part, they quit the leader. So it's always good to check in and see, you know, where are they at? That's a good good point to make. Awareness is where you start. You're listening to Tuttle Talk here on the Real Estate Radio Network. We're talking with Elizabeth Lyon. She's actually had the pleasure of working with leaders of Microsoft, eBay, Intel, Wells Fargo, Pfizer, and that's just a few of them. So she's very experienced in what we're talking about today. If you want to reach out to us and get in touch with her, maybe about a speaking engagement, talking about you to make sure you're doing the best for your employees, call us, 214-736-9696, 214-736-9696. We'll get you in touch with her and get you in position to make sure you're ready for this market in 2013. So, Elizabeth, you know, the good news is we have a small business owner right here. I know. As well. Where? <laughs> Where? Who? Huh? Who? What? Well, you're not small, but you're going to be. <laughs> hey. Hey. Zing. Nice. There's Zing. nothing like listening to two guys on a cleanse, let me wow. tell you. <laughs> <laughs> that is a little, uh, <laughs> well, never mind. Moving on. So, Elizabeth, what are some questions that you would ask Gabe here as a CEO of his company to make sure that he had a pulse on his employees? If Gabe were listening to the show and he thought, he I is. have to talk to Elizabeth and I wonder what she could tell me about my organization and so forth and what, what do I need to be considering? One of the things I would ask is, can you identify your top performers? Can you identify your mid-level performance? And can you identify your low performers? Okay, so Gabe, can you? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we, I mean, as far as uh, we're in a little bit of a unique, I mean, our, our company's small, uh, mm -hmm. is growing rapidly, but from the people we have here, yeah, I mean, we know exactly who our top performers are. I mean, numbers are tracked on a daily basis. So, uh, yeah, I could I could tell you who my top performers are and my mid performers. Okay, so and then the next question would I would ask is now they're in a sales capacity, correct? They are, yes. See, that's beautiful because sales you know. Sales and service. Okay, that's beautiful because we then sell you know through our service. <laughs> okay, well then you know, looking at numbers and data right there, if they're hitting it or not, where whether if it's if it were an accounting person. For example, that would be a little harder to determine their performance or if it were a manager or if it were a, you see what I'm saying, other mm -hmm. skill sets, harder to really measure brass tacks of are they doing the job or not. Clearly, you have that data. My other question would be, um, did you ever ask them, you know, why do you work here? You could have a job anywhere. What do you like about working here? What do you not like about working here? On that note, I'm very, very in tune with our with our team. I mean, our culture is amazing. 
And right. I mean, it's been that way from the get go. And so, I mean, we have, you know, morning uh, trainings every Thursday at 7 a.m. So you've got, and it was amazing, actually, good, good segue. This morning, I got to the office at like 645 and they're already there. Wow. I was like, really? What? They're in good. tune. They're yeah. there. They're ready to go. You know, so That's yeah, good. they're they're pumped that we've uh, our, our our culture is awesome. But I can see how when as the organization organization grows, we lose that touch, and so we're trying to instill that. That was going to be my next go. question because you guys are just doing a great job growing the business. So then it's uh, you know, can you identify the culture and what do you stand for and so forth? And how do you, you know, retain the important things about your culture as you continue to grow? Those are all things to kind of think about and map out. And succession planning. I mean, I think that's another thing. If you've got top performers, what's the career path? You know, where can they move? Can they move anywhere? I mean, what does it look like? Referrals are something I would strongly recommend. Your top performers, you know, get referrals because top talent hangs out with top talent. And the bottom line is, if you go into Microsoft and you looked in the their cafeteria, which is like unbelievable, let me tell you, if you went in there, you would not see top engineers hanging out with like low end engineers. It doesn't happen. Top talent doesn't hang out with people that aren't on par with the same performance and the same kind of values. So they're a great source of referrals for your company. You know, Microsoft does a tremendous amount of referrals in their company. Yeah. And we're very aware of that. We've actually, you know, probably last year we actually sat down and the people that are there now, we actually gave them a secondary role. So they're already training for their leadership roles when we bring people in. Underneath Excellent. Them. See, that's really great. Gabe has been in a – Gabe is unique in that, I think. And a lot of business owners don't do that. Right. And so I think it's interesting, too. And I think really, Gabe, this last year, this last maybe year to 18 months, is really when you've focused on that and even as recently as the last six months really gotten better at getting your vision down and imparting that to your people, right? Isn't that within the last 12 months all this has happened? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you're – you know, all CEOs or all business owners have visions, but if we don't pass that down to to the employees, they don't know where we're going, and in turn, we don't know where they're going. So we had, you know, one-on-one sessions with every single one of our employees. I know their vision. I know what they want to do. I know what they want to do with that extra money they make. Mm-hmm. And so from a motivational standpoint, now it comes from, you know, hey, Bob, you know, you didn't – it looks like you didn't hit your sales numbers right. this week. So if if I've had that conversation with Bob and it's – Bob needs to needs to make you know an extra twenty thousand dollars this year to send his kids to school. Right. It's not how, hey Bob, what's going on? Why didn't you hit your sales number? It's like, all right, Bob, have a good weekend. I guess your son's not going to make it to college. Oh, wow. <laughs> so guilty. Which is more guilty. effective? You know? Right. But, yeah. I mean, that's an extreme situation, but sure. I mean, you're in tune with what their needs are, so right. we're we're very in tune with our employees. I think that's good, though. You know, just to ground them, I think that's a good thing. Yeah. So Elizabeth, the last thing you wrote in your article was about business plans and that they're good, but at the end of the day, the bottom line is your staff needs to deliver the objectives in order to survive and thrive in the post recession. So, how important do you think? really vision is and how valuable do you think it is to make sure that you you and your employees have a vision for the business? I think they're equally important. I don't think it's one over another. I think what I was really trying to say there in a very nice way was people work for you, not machines. Good. That's what I was really trying to get at. And people are the ones that deliver your business directives so that you can drive the Mercedes and go home to the nice house or whatever it is you're doing, vacation in Hawaii or whatever. And I think it's important to remember that you didn't get there alone and that it's a joint effort. And, you know, there should, just to remember that. Um, I'm a very, you know, type A kind of business person and I believe in objectives and I believe in numbers, but I also see if you look at the people side of it, you can actually pull more out of them. Frankly, you can actually get a little bit further. And that was really the point of the article. You're listening to Tuttle Talk. My special guest today is Elizabeth Lyons. She just wrote an article for CEO Texas. She is an author and been an executive recruiter, and she's also a speaker and a trainer. Elizabeth, we've talked about a lot of topics. Sum up for us what it's going to take for an organization to make sure, and an employer, CEO level, to make sure they're in tune with their employees and are prepared for 2013 post-recession? Well, I think one of the first things is don't dump it on HR. You know, I think it's very easy to think this is an HR problem and HR can deal with that and tell me what's going on and report up to me. I think I think leaders need to get involved in their business and figure out what's going on, whether it's a small business or a large business. Even if you're a department head in a large company, I think it's important that you're figuring out what's going on there and then looking ahead because if that market shifts, 
the question to ask is, are you ready to lose them? Are you prepared to lose them? And if you are, that's cool, but make sure maybe it's not your top performers because that's what's going to happen. Rocking back and thinking everything's okay is not a plan. <laughs> so I would get something that resembles a plan and, uh, again, don't saddle it with HR. <laughs> your book, I Quit, Working for You Isn't Working for Me, who is that written for? It's actually written for the survivors of recession. It's written for people that want to see what else is out there. You know, it's written for somebody who hasn't done a job search in a number of years and is afraid. They know that social media has changed. They know that they need to post resumes online to job boards. They don't know how to go about that. They have no idea how to manage their LinkedIn. You know, sometimes they treat their LinkedIn like Facebook, which is a huge mistake. Um, so it's really for the confidential job seeker. It's it's not for somebody that, that isn't job seeking. But on the flip side of that, what the book has given me is entrees into companies that are interested in retaining, identifying what is their benchmark for top talent, and then also looking at, uh, you know, succession planning. So the book is works for employers as well in mm. terms of it's opened those doors is right. what I would say. Mm. For both sections. And then yeah. someone reading this book, when they're getting it, they pick it up, they get through it. What are the couple of the key takeaways that they're going to get out of this book? Social media, watching your per perception online. You know, what is that? Uh, how to get your resume on the hiring manager's desk and out of cyberspace. <laughs> and then also, you know, just looking at your career, auditing your career, auditing what are you doing. Maybe you should leave the job. Maybe you shouldn't. You know, I think that that's an important first step. And that's covered in the very beginning of the book. Those are two good things, Elizabeth. You are uh, a lot of you have a lot of wisdom. It's a fantastic book. I appreciate you Thank being you. here, guys. Elizabeth Lyons again. She is an accomplished speaker. She is. Uh, this is her second book. The first one was Recession Proof Yourself. Yes. Yep. Two thousand nine. That came out. Yep. Fifteen that, million people unemployed, and that made a splash. Yeah, yeah, it definitely did. And so she she sat with more than three thousand executives again over with Microsoft, Pfizer, eBay, Intel, Wells Fargo tons. She knows what she's talking about. She's a powerful speaker. She has worked with top executives to help them identify, attract, and retain their top talent. And she works one-on-one -on -one with executives. And she's Absolutely, yeah. And she's available for leadership seminars on all kinds of business topics. That's where I met you yeah. in the beginning. So if you want to talk to her in more detail about your company, you want to find out about scheduling maybe a training seminar, maybe a speaking engagement, call us, 214-736-9696, 214-736-9696, or email me at questions at andytuttle.com. And, of course, you can also go to our fan page, facebook.com forward slash Tuttle Talk. We're going to have our links to the book on there, links to her, and more information about that so you can definitely get in touch with her. Elizabeth, thanks so much for being here. Thanks so much. I'm really glad to be here. Thanks. Bet. You're listening to Tuttle Talk on 1190 AM KFXR. You can catch all shows at andytuttle.com. Coming up, can you really, in a healthy way, shed fat for the summer without working out or taking diet drugs? I'll tell you in Coach's Corner. Plus, we're going to get to our real steal of the week. All that next. This program is brought to you by the Real Estate Radio Network. Visit realestateradio.us for more info. That's realestateradio.us. Why do I need an agent? I'll just go online and get my own insurance. I'll save money if I do it myself, right? Online relationships aren't for everyone. A good agent gets to know a little bit about you and the things that you own so that he or she can get you the right coverage at the right price. And when you have a claim, you should feel good knowing you can call your agent. The same person who helped you get the coverage, the one who knows you, not some online stranger. If you are getting nothing out of your current insurance relationship, call me at 214-736-9696. I'm John Allen at Texas Community Insurance, and I can help you. Once again, that's John Allen, 214-736-9696. As a business owner, are you getting all the tax advantages that are available to you? Are your assets protected from creditors as much as possible? What are you doing to save and invest your hard-earned income on a tax-favored basis? And finally, are you aware that you can legally discriminate in favor of yourself and other key employees with certain planning techniques? Hi, I'm Randy Nichols, partner at Spectrum Financial Group in Addison, Texas. If you answered no or you're unaware of the answer to any of these questions, call me at 214-736-9696. 
I can provide you with the answer to these and other important questions to help you improve your personal financial situation and take advantage of all the benefits that are available to you. Call me, Randy Nichols, at 214-736-9696. That's 214-736-9696. That's 214-736-9696. Why do people prefer to do business with Fidelity National Title? Some people say for the high-level security we offer through our solid financial strength. Some say they trust our history of excellent service. But most say it's our passion for excellence that keeps our customers coming back. Put your trust in a company that stands the test of time and will be here tomorrow. To learn more about Fidelity National Title, visit FidelityDFW.com or call 877-862-9111. Every week. I don't know why you think you're getting away with this. You are listening to Tuttle Talk on the Real Estate Radio Network. I am your host, Andy Tuttle. You can reach out to us at 214-736-9696 or become a fan of the show. Get involved in the conversation. Get all kinds of good real estate and financial tips at facebook.com forward slash Tuttle Talk. Guys, it's time to get into our Real Steal of the Week. This segment is brought to you by our friends at Pratt, Acock, and Associates, PLLC. It's a firm in Dallas, Texas, that handles a number of consumer and business legal matters. Their focus is on communicating regularly and effectively with their clients to provide a high level of service and results in areas like estate planning, real estate, bankruptcy, document preparation, and even business formation. So reach out to Pratt, Acock, and Associates for any of those needs. Chris Oleg, are you here with us today? Today. I am, Andy. What is up? Hey, what's going on, my man? I know you're busy out there, so I'll keep I won't keep you long today on a Saturday, but what is I know you got a deal for us this week. What is the steal of the week? Okay. Well today I actually want to tell you about a new listing that Halo just got last night. Um it's just outside the city, conveniently located in Murphy, Texas, which is just slightly east of Plano. It's gonna be forty three hundred square feet. Good lord. Five bedroom, four and a half bath, three car garage. It's on a quarter acre. With a pool, cabana, outdoor kitchen, built-in grill, media room, game room, and craft room. Fully updated with granite, stainless steel, brand new carpet, etc. Um, it's listed at three fifty nine nine, which is only eighty three dollars a square feet <laughs> That's for amazing. all of that. Um, you can actually find it on my main site. It'll be on the front page, holygroup.com, um, and it'll take you to a link for a walkthrough video of the home with the always beautiful Colleen Frost. Oh, very nice. So here's what I want you to do as well. Make sure, as always, you get me a link to that, if you'd send me that link so I can make sure to also post it on the fan page. So if you missed it here, you didn't weren't able to write down that name or spelled it wrong, you can go to the fan page and you'll get it there. Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> All right, man. Hey, buddy, I appreciate you for always providing a value and your leadership in the community, and thanks for giving us our deal this week, buddy. Hey, thanks, Andy. You bet, man. Have a good one. All right. You too. Bye. All right, guys, that is a steal. Definitely check that out. I can't believe you can get so much space in Murphy. My goodness, 4,300 square feet, 359,000, totally updated. Take advantage of that. Go to the fan page, and we'll have the link there for you. And now let's get to, I think, maybe one of my favorite segments because I'm going through this health kick right now, Coach's Corner with a good friend, Coach Jimmy. Jimmy, how you doing, man? I'm doing fantastic. How you doing, Andy? Well, you know, I, we was talking about it with Gabe earlier who uh, was eating his – you know, microgreen salad for lunch and all those goodies that I've also had. And, uh, you know, even though it's a lot of stinking work, I'll be honest with you, it is, I mean, it's so healthy. I do feel better. I've been sleeping a little bit better. Apparently, I'm not snoring as much. <laughs> so that's what the wife says. So, I mean, I think there's some positive things going about it. And so whatever it is, it's a little bit of work, but it seems worth it to me so far. Well, welcome to the world of resetters, of the ultimate resetter clan. Uh, I'm proud of you, man. That's awesome. Better sleep, less snoring, a little bit of work to put the food together, but uh, but you feel like you're you're feeling better, yes? Yeah? I am feeling better, you dirty rat. It's uh, I'm just trying to. Gabe's got a lot more weight to lose than me, you know, obviously, but I'm still trying to beat him out on this deal as far as weight loss goes. <laughs> I can't. Isn't it an am- isn't it amazing, though, when you actually put some effort into something that works instead of wasting money on a gimmick or a pill or a quick fix that may take a little more effort, that may need some support, like the Facebook group that we have you guys set up in where you can ask questions, Yep. but something that actually works instead of a gimmick that you may 
spend a little money on, it doesn't work. And then that's just money that you wasted and you're disappointed again. I do agree with you. And I will say this, just something about cooking the food and doing that together with the wife. It kind of brings me back to, I don't know, an earlier time, a less busy time. And it's actually kind of a nice feeling, even though we've been doing it a little too late at night. <laughs> no, that's great. And, and you're still taking your vegan Shakeology in the midst of doing this reset also, right? Correct. That's actually what I do for a snack. So it's a great afternoon. I'm allowed a snack. I take that. It's not only like 150 calories or some crap. And then so I take that down, and it's delicious, and actually it does keep me going through the rest of the day. Man, I have very little to add to this, Andy, because everything that you said, when people ask, what is this ultimate reset? What is this cleanse? Do I have to drink water and cayenne and lemon and not eat and be grumpy, you've said it. You get to make these amazing meals. You get snacks throughout the day. You're not going hungry. And just in the first few days, you're already seeing results. And, man, for me, that's what it's all about. Does it work or doesn't it? And it's so exciting to hear your results already. Thanks a lot, man. I will tell you this, too, and I'll do this in closing with this. But, man, actually, we weren't even able to finish a couple of the meals. It's freaky. But that cucumber salad, there was so much. And the miso soup. I mean, there's a lot of stinking food that we're able to eat. But I guess it's just because it's low-calorie food, because it's vegetables and fruits and whatnot, that we've got full I haven't felt super hungry when I am. It's about time that I need to be eating again anyway. And I've lost over three pounds, and, you know, the wife has too. And we're just, you know, it's great, actually. So you were right, you little punk. I think I owe you money for that. <laughs> no, that's awesome. And, and just the tip of that is because they're nutrient-dense foods as opposed to a lot of food. You have Your body gets all those nutrients it usually doesn't. So congratulations, man. I'm proud of you. Thank you very much. Please put some links up to The Ultimate Reset in case you want to join us in this and you want to say, man, I'm ready for that. Do that. Also put the Shakeology link on there, would you? So if you want to get access to any of these products, he's right. They do work, and they're awesome, actually. So we're on it. We've got a whole team of people now doing it. If you want to join in, go to Facebook.com forward slash Tuttle Talk. We'll have the links for you. Thanks so much, Jimmy. Awesome. Have a great week. You too. All right, guys, you are listening to Tuttle Talk. I hope you've enjoyed this hour. I hope you enjoyed the conversation with Elizabeth. If you missed any of it, don't worry. We post the slideshow on Tuesday on the fan page, so you can go there and pick that up, or you can pick up all past shows and segments broken out at at, uh, my website, andytuttle.com. Remember to get your boots on, guys. We're getting more and more people on this. Get them on, wear them, take pictures, go to bootcampaign.com, support our troops, and post them on the fan page. We want to hear about it also. If you are in a situation where you're upside down in your home and you don't know if you can refinance, go to yourmortgagereview.com or you just want to save some money and you don't know about the savings analysis, go to yourmortgagereview.com. We'll get you a complimentary savings analysis, a free copy of your credit report with tips on how to improve your score, and we'll have you a free mortgage coach consultation with one of our mortgage coaches to help you take care of your home and save some money. Okay. If you'd like to discuss anything, don't forget to call us, 214-736-9696, and we'll make sure to get with you right away. I'd like to thank Coach Jimmy, Gabe, all of our partners of the show, and my special guest today, Elizabeth Lyons. I'd also like to thank Danny Miles, our production director, and the entire family here at KFXR. That's it for today. Race Talk is coming up next. This is Andy Tuttle for the Real Estate Radio Network. We'll be back here next Saturday from 11 a.m. to noon right here on Clear Channel 1190. So save this station, and thanks for listening to Tuttle Talk, where we're making financial intelligence a priority in our community. Have a great weekend.